of Judah has conquered. He reigns forever. The Amen. The firstborn from the dead. The root of death. The root of Rabba Koshiri Kiyaza. The root and offspring of David. And the bright and morning star. The Amen. We lift up the name of Jesus over this time, over this day, day 113, as we come to make prophetic intercession and to make understanding of this wonderful, wonderful feature that God has given us. We want to commence straight into the word of God in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 23. The word of the Lord says, I received from the Lord what I also gave unto you. The night the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now, Father, we are grateful for this time lord that we are here to make intercession and to understand and to proclaim your word father i thank you for the bread i thank you for the cup i thank you lord for the ability for the holy spirit to guide us and to lead us in all righteousness i welcome you precious lord that indeed by your strength and by your power and your dominion abba father that you will lead us lord i celebrate you O holy spirit thank you lord jesus for you said where two or three are gathered in my name there i am in their midst so father we thank you that you are here with us i thank you that you are here among us oh god i thank you that you have allowed us to come into your assembly oh god and father as we start this broadcast we want to come against every spirit lord that is of the enemy that may want to come and bring destruction in the realm of the spirit, even concerning us. We pray that God, your hand will remove all the weight and every burden that is of the enemy in our lives. We pray that the Holy Spirit, you will reign, you will reign, you will win, you will reign, you will win, you will reign. You always have won. We stand to represent the victory. So Lord, as we do this Holy Communion in the nations, Lord, we present our spirit as contrite before you. For your word says that a contrite and broken spirit I will not despise. So Father, we tremble at your presence. And God, we ask that the Holy Spirit will speak even to us that the voice that we will receive is the voice of the Spirit. That God, everything that you're going to teach us is going to be that which is in your heart and mind. So Lord, we welcome you, hallelujah, into our hearts where you dwell. Father, indeed, you're welcome into my life. You are, hallelujah. Father, I honor you, Lord Jesus. I honor you. Lord, I just decount myself as nothing, oh God. I reduce that you may increase in my life. Father God, I pray that if I count anything, Lord Jesus, I decree that according to your word in Galatians 6, 17, that Lord, let from now on no one trouble me, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. I pray again, in the mighty name of Jesus, Galatians 3.13, that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. That is, it is written that cast is he who hung on a tree. Father God, we come in this time to proclaim your death and even associate with that great transfer from our poverty to your riches, from our diseases and sicknesses to your health. Father God, the great deliverance that you have given unto us. So we surround this space with the blood of Jesus. We surround ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We pray that this very act will be upon us in a mighty way. So we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to partake of the bread and as we partake of this bread if there is any sickness in your body if there is any spiritual challenge in your neighborhood or where you live or even in your marriage may the Lord begin to deal with it right now in the name of Jesus right now in the name of Jesus right now 
in the name of Jesus. As we partake of this cup and this bread, we pray that the Lord will open our spiritual eyes. The eyes of our spirit will open. The eyes of our spirit will open. Hallelujah. Let the eyes open. That we will hear what you have to say for us. As we partake of this bread, any sinful way, any ways that did not glorify God in me, any attempt of backsliding from my spirit, Lord, it will not come near me. In the name of Jesus. Let's partake of the bread together. your blood father as we come again to this fountain of blood lord we partake of this cup with understanding that god you will guide us and you protect us as we proclaim your death until you come in jesus name we pray amen Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 113. Father, we honor you for bringing us to this large place. Hallelujah. I just want you to endeavor to go into the Spirit. The Spirit is a place you must decide to go. It's a place that you connect by the Word of God. By walking with God, by trusting Him. So I want you to tune in into the Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, precious Spirit of God. Thank you that you're here with us. Thank you that you live. Thank you that your presence is heaven to us. Thank you for your people in Israel, Lord Jesus. Thank you for giving us a command to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Thank you for giving us a command, Lord. Giving us a command. Lord, you are worthy of all the praise and honor. 
There is none who can compare to you, none in the heavens, none on the earth, none that can compare to you. Father, we pray this morning, night and afternoon, whatever time, Lord, against the spirit of the born woman. Lord God, we pray against all the activities of terror in our nations. We pray against all the activities of witchcraft and deception. We pray, God, that you will arise on our behalf, O oh God. Father, now I pray for the spirit of prophetic intercession over your children. Thank you, Lord, for my brother Joshua. Thank you for my brother Zach, Lord. Release the spirit of intercession upon them. Hallelujah. Come on, share the link, brother Zach, with the group. Hallelujah. Psalm 113. Oh, Prophetic intercession. That you may begin to know how to pray into the spirit in advance, in the prophetic, that you can catch that prayer. It's what we are talking about right now. That the spirit of God is moving. He is here right now. The anointing is real. The anointing is real. The anointing is real. That when God causes you, moves your heart to to his agenda that begins to tell you the secret things of the spirit then get ready because it says blessed are those who fear the Lord that already you are blessed already you are not going to pray Lord bless me no God has already blessed you because you fear him I want you to focus on Jesus Just Jesus Focus on Jesus Lord I focus on you Hallelujah Not on circumstances Not on situations But Lord I choose to focus my spirit on you. I choose love to bind all the virtues together. Hallelujah. Lord, I focus on you with a loud voice like Jehoshaphat. Lord, I focus on you. Lord, Focus my spirit on you, Lord. It's only you. It's not about men. It's not about what people will say. It's about Jesus. It's about Him. It's about His cross. Let Him crucify. That we can connect with His Word. That His Word become flesh for us. Hey, Holy Ghost. Flood this place, flood this house, flood this altar, flood my life with your presence. You have my permission, Lord. Take over my family, take over my children, take over my wife. Lord, as your priest in this home, I proclaim your presence. Hallelujah. Come on. I want you to make intercession. Prayer. We are not doing someone. We are doing this practical. Pray. Hey, Rakosi. You could be there driving. You could be there working. You could be there. Whatever you are encountering this video. I want you to know that when you trust in God. When you put your spirit in the place. When you take your spirit. The spirit. You must understand the spirit you carry. Is able to contain God in it. That the spirit you carry right now has the capacity to speak to your tomorrow and your tomorrow and your next tomorrow. That God is able to cause his word to go into your future. To go into your future and disrupt all the plans of the enemy. We know in Revelation 12 that the dragon was cast down on the earth. He knows his time is short. That's why he's bringing destruction. 
is bringing destruction that people may not pray, that people may not pray together, that people may not walk together, that churches may not be in unity. He brings destruction in choirs, in intercessory groups. He will not come and scatter your church. No, he will just bring disunity. He'll allow disunity to come because he knows that two can take 10,000 to fly. So he will bring something that will cause the senior pastor not to agree with the choir leader. And, you know, those kind of things. I want us to pray against destruction. Lord, we decree that unity is our portion. We decree love is our portion. In our churches, in our prayer groups, our Father. The enemy will not come to pour cold water on what you are doing. Father, we trust you. We put our confidence in you. We know you are in control. We know you are God. All by yourself. That God, you do not need a man for you to be God. You do not need a church or a denomination. Neither do you need a following of people. Father, you remain sovereign. And we honor you, Lord God. Hey! I lift up a shout before you. That God, you will intervene in every category. Lord God, on this eve of the Independence Day of Israel, O oh God, a day that was prophetic in the nations, uh, that you spoke and said, gather up the nations, hey, gather them up from the nations, then Lord, let them, let the south uh, release, let the, the north release, let the east release, let the west release, and you gathered your people Israel, 73 years ago, on May 14th, 1948. So Lord, we are praying understanding that you are a God who answers prayer. <laughs> we know you are a God who answers prayer. We know that God, that's your nature. Your nature is when we pray, you answer. Your nature is when we seek your face, you come. That God, your nature is that we focus our spirit on Jesus. Every spirit of slander scatter in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of castes and enchantments and witchcraft scatter in the name of Jesus. Father, we advance as God's unbeatable army. In the name of Jesus, we advance as God's unbeatable army. Ay, 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 ay. Oh my Lord. The enemy tried to rise up like a, like a, like a flood. Shetani anaishi kuchelewa. Hallelujah. Umechelewa tayari. Umewekwa chini ya migu yetu. Hawezi kutuelekeza njia ile siya kweli. Tuko na kweli mwenyewe. Yesu ndiyo kweli. Yesu ndiyo njia. Yes, I, my Lord. You are the truth. The way and the life. Lord, we do not follow lie. We follow truth. You are the truth. The way and the life. Lord, as intercessors, we come to you. We come to you. Father, we don't go to any other office. We don't go to apostles. We don't go to teachers. We don't go to prophets. We don't go to teachers. We don't go to evangelists. We don't go to pastors. Lord, we come to you direct. Hey, what an assurance that I don't need another priest. What an assurance that I don't need a man of God. Hey, what an assurance that I need Jesus. Oh, Rabasunda, Rabasoka, Rabasori. I don't need angels. Hallelujah. I have direct access. Oh my God. Where two or three of us are gathered, you are here. You are here right now. Oh, Rakashuta Kara. I worship you, God. I behold your beauty. I behold your beauty. In this journey, Lord, let it be, re let it be recorded that it was not just about
about uh, us reading mechanically. But Father, let it be recorded that there are moments like this when you drew us closer and you drew us to empty ourselves of ourselves. Hallelujah. Beloved of the Lord, the Spirit plays, the Spirit prays. For us to be able to understand what God is drawing us to do, we must have the proper use of emotion. allow the cross of Jesus to operate deeply upon our emotion that we allow the cross on our emotions we will discover that our emotions will no longer obstruct but rather cooperate with the spirit dealt with the natural life with the emotion. For you to be a spiritual man or woman, you need to use your feelings to express the divine life of Jesus in you. Not to use your emotions. To determine when to pray, when to read the word of God. You know, life in the spirit does not mean life without emotions. to deliver your emotions to the cross. The moment you are there as a choir leader and somebody is crossing your path, how are you going to react? The emotion that is crucified with Christ is not going to show anger. Anger is not of God. That one is, we don't need any man of God to teach us. We know anger is not of the Lord. We know hatred is not of the Lord. We know jealousy is not of the Lord. We know very well that the things of the Spirit that are guided by the cross will cause your emotions to marry the spirit and together there will be no challenge. When you find a circumstance or a situation that is causing you to be angry, you remember that your anger was taken on the cross. So you do not allow that emotion to come and stop you from praying. Because that, emo that emotion is very, very powerful and it's in your soul. The soul contains three things. I've taught this many times. The soul contains of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Right now, there are a lot of believers who are being moved to pray for Israel out of emotions. They have seen something on television. They have seen the rockets. They have seen the people uh, being bombed in Tel Aviv. As usual, the media will show you Palestine. Will show you the people dying in Palestine. Will show you the women, the children, and those things. Because the West, the West media is anti-Semitic. That basically they do, they are not friends of Israel at all. If you notice everywhere, people are asking, "Why are we praying for Israel? Why? Why should we pray for Israel?" Listen, four one one on you, breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. It is not because of the war that we are praying for Israel. The nation of Israel will pray for it is a command of God. We've been told in Psalm 122, say, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper, they that love thee. It does not say, when you see a war, pray for Israel. No! In fact, I bring a rebuke of love to the churches that ignore Israel. Just talking about prosperity, other things, you ignore this very powerful truth that God has put in, our script, in the scripture. So now, since you can get your emotions woken up, woken up, 
for you to pray for Israel, then make it a constant thing that you do. I believe God to help us to stand with the nation of Israel constantly to also pray for the Hamas because God also died for them. But if you notice in the scriptures, when it was time to judge Ammon, when it was time to judge the Moabites, when it was time to judge the Midianites, when God's time was to judge the Philistines, there was no other question. The Philistines were wiped away. The Moabites were wiped away. The uh, Canaanites were wiped away. But Israel remained. Thousands of years, this nation has been there. Over 3,000 years. So we ought to understand that we do not want to move with our emotion. And in this journey of 150 days of Psalm, I thank God because He told it to me, don't be in a hurry. Just walk at my pace. The Holy Spirit guiding us, what a joy. What a joy to know that the Holy Spirit is guiding us. When He is guiding us, what a joy to know He is guiding us. Hallelujah. Prophetic intercession is being able to pray according to the purposes of God and being able to make intercession concerning His word. That's the way it is. Prophetic intercession will allow you to pray the word of God. Psalm 113. Let us present it before God. I will now read Psalm 113. Today is day 113. And um, we thank God that uh, tomorrow is the Independence Day of Israel. And we are praying that that... Those rockets will not be there. I mean, it's the only nation that has bomb shelters everywhere. As in, you go, it's just like sirens. They are used, they know it. They don't even run. They are not scared. They just hear, wheel, wheel, wheel. They run to the bomb shelter. If you, have, you build a house, you make a bomb shelter. You have a school, it has a bomb shelter. You have a, a synagogue, it has a bomb shelter. I mean, Israel is one of the nations that everywhere is full of bomb shelters. And one thing that they have made clear to Hamas and Gaza is that stop the shelling or we are coming after you on the land and we are going to take the land. This time, we are not going to have mercy. We are going to even take the land from you. This is what Netanyahu uh, spoke yesterday in his speech. And for me, 100% I stand with Israel. 100% there is no question. Because it's the nation of the Lord. For me, my purpose for standing with Israel is not political. It is because what God has commanded, that's what we follow. And Jesus is Jewish, 100%. But he's also from the tribe of the Lion of Judah, that God would allow a generation, the lineage of Jesus, when you read, there are people who are there are not perfect. We even have prostitutes there. So that God can show you that it is not according to what man thinks, but according to his plan and purpose. As we make intercession, as we make intercession, we must know one of the key chapters to have is Colossians chapter 3. In my lifetime, I want to memorize Colossians chapter 3. That it is part of my life. Hallelujah. In my mission Monday, I went to Kahuro in um, Morana. And there, my heart was tested by the Lord. Because we went into this shop to buy some materials for the church that we are building there. And there was an Asian man who was the shopkeeper, who was the hardware storekeeper. He was very arrogant. He did not want to look in our direction. Yet, we had come with a lot of business for his business. So, I tried to excuse, to say, excuse me, excuse me, sir. He ignored, 100%, the man ignored me. And, uh, you know, just being human, I told Pastor Nesman, I said, let's go. We don't need to uh, buy from here. Let's just go. I was not angry, but I didn't like that. I mean, it was just bad customer service. Horrible customer service, I must say. So uh, we, we came out and we started driving towards Kahuro. So I asked him, any other suppliers you can buy the same materials uh, around here? He said, actually, in the whole of this town, that's the only store that has the materials we need for roofing, blue in color and box, box profile, and they have a good reasonable price. So as we went along, I'm driving, then the Holy Spirit drops into my spirit, be forbearing with each other. The book of Colossians chapter 3, it says forbearing with each other, forgiving each other as Christ forgave you. 
And the Holy Spirit said to me, let's give that man another chance. I want you to give that man another chance. So I talked to Pastor Onesimus and I told him, I'm going to pass there on my way back and we are going to buy from that man. So, you know, I explained to him what the Spirit has just told me. So on my way back, after we went to the, the church, we prayed, we asked God for a finisher's anointing. We prayed, it was threatening to rain, so I had to leave very fast uh, from that space. But now, when I got into the store this time, I found the man is the one seated on the counter. And I greeted him, I said, Shalom. I just said, no, I didn't tell him Shalom. I greeted him, I said, um, uh, how are you? I have come back. Because he noticed I was irritated when I was going. He noticed that, you know, I walked out. He noticed that the first time. So I said, I've come back. Then I went straight to the business. I want iron sheets for 2 meters and iron sheets for 2.5 meters. How much is it? I have I have $100. I want to make a deposit. The whole thing is costing like um, 900 Is it? No. Yeah, it's 900, about uh, 9,096 uh, something, 96,000, that's what we need for building the roof of Kahuro. So I had 10,000 with me, that is equivalent of $100. And I, I said, here, I've come to make this deposit because we want to buy this number of iron sheets from you. And then when he was writing my receipt and everything and everything and everything, I said to him, but I must tell you this. Your customer service was not good. In fact, if you do that, then immediately now, his emotion kicked in. He says, listen, you do not have to buy from me. If you don't want to buy from me, it's okay. I said, listen, I have just forgiven you. And I was laughing in my mask. <laughs> he didn't have a mask. Then, you know, I said, I cannot ret retrieve the money. You just write the receipt. So he said, what do I write? Then I say, write Kahuro Police Chapel. So he looks like... This man is a policeman. Ah, it's different. But I'm not a policeman. I said, just write it down that way. So he wrote on the receipt. So as I forgave this man, I started to see. I didn't even say anything about the scripture. I just spoke love. I said, listen. I said, what is your number? He said, is there on the receipt? I said, no, what is your name? I want your name. <laughs> this man was really wondering what kind of a human being is this. Because the kind of people he's used to are people who are, you know, they are, their only contact is money. You know, they, they don't want, they are not interested to find out what's his name. And, you know, because there is in a town that is the only Asian, you know, like there's no other Asian around. So you can imagine he's developed a sense of these people can steal from me. These people can be, you know, he has some, some kind of fear in him. So I told him. Write also this number. This is for my colleague who was here earlier. He might try to you. And you can find help with them. Those are police officers. They can help you for something else. So this man, you know, I asked him for his number. He gave me his number. And he gave me his name. And he received the, he received the happiness. He received the joy. I could see him. I said, smile more. I told him, when your customers come and, you know, you are busy, you have a long line, just smile at them and tell them, please join the queue. You know, just tell them something. Don't look at them like, why did you come? Go away. You know, this is the kind of feeling that had been released by this shop, by this uh, hardware owner. And, you know, we actually became friends with him. And I even took a selfie with with him and, and, and with my son, because I took my son with me for the, for the mission. So what am I trying to tell you? For prophetic intercession, you must be in the spirit. And to remain in the spirit, you must bring your emotions there. You must bring your soul to the spirit. So that your mind, your will and emotions will remain focused on Jesus. Focused on Jesus. If it's in a wrong, you're in a wrong relationship that does not glorify God, the man is married and you are single, you want to continue, he's telling you his wife is mistreating him and all that. Already that one is called adultery. Even without him sleeping with you, young lady, that is already adultery because you think of this person in that way. The moment you allow and entertain this person in your life, then you cannot be an intercessor. How will you intercede when you're carrying sin in your life? The book of Psalm 66 verse 18, it says something that 
is profound. That it says that if I had tolerated sin, if at all I had allowed sin in my life, then the Lord would not have listened. Hmm? It says that if at all I had, if at all I had, I had done what? It's in 66 verse 18. Hallelujah. I hope I'm communicating. I hope I'm saying something to you benefiting your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 66 verse number 18. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. I made a new friend in Mukuyu in Moranga the hardware owner and i told him when we finish when we are doing the church one day i would want to invite you i said yeah you invite me i will come i said that's good i said very well i will make sure i invite you you know and the man was happy i connected with him and you know that was a joy then and then i told him but sir please put on your mask then he said you know when i'm in here I remove but when I go outside I put on mask I said let me show you something then I went to my phone and I showed him a picture of me in a ventilator I said I'm just talking to you like this but a couple of weeks ago this was me in a ventilator receiving oxygen from machines and man that moved his heart he said wow I said God did a miracle for me God did a miracle for me I'm sure he has relatives in India who are affected by COVID-19. And that man just picked his mask, put it on, and I could see his wife smiling because the wife probably was telling him to put on a mask, but he's not putting on a mask. So I thank God for Colossians 3. That Colossians 3 is that we may be able to pray it into our lives. Totally. Colossians 3. Hmm. Colossians 3 will solve all the problems we have in our churches. Colossians 3 will solve issues even in governments and politics. Colossians 3 says, Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. It says, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Ha! Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. So whatever belongs to your earthly nature is always with you. It's following you. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Because of this, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways. In the life you once lived. But now you must rid yourselves of these things. Rage, anger, malice, slander and filthy language from your lips. Don't lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices. And have put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of his creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and he is in all. Hallelujah! Verse 12. And this is what Lord spoke to me. He said, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion. Judy sweets. Clothe yourself with compassion. Kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. This is the scripture. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body you are called to peace and be thankful members of one body if at all your friend goes to another church that is bible believing that is working in god you should not start fighting them because they do not uh, sing the choruses you sing maybe they sing hymns you you like downloading contemporary songs and singing those ones and all of you god loves you 
But you see what God says that let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. You must work. Yani, this is something the intercessor must work. A lot of things are going around the world and there are so many things taking our mind. So many things taking our mind. So many things you are thinking about this, thinking about that. I have a dear friend of mine, very, very dear friend, who's lost three key relatives in a very short span of time. And they were just okay. Then all of a sudden, the evil hand of death comes and he picks one and picks another, picks another, like that. This person is crushed, totally crushed. They can't pray. But it's in that time that the scripture rises up and says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. This is, let me tell you, beloved of the Lord, you just hear these scriptures we read here, but these scriptures are life. This scripture, to you, I'm, I'm sharing because I know you're going to watch this video. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. As members of one body, you are called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell in you richly. As you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your heart. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. That is Colossians 3 from verse 1 all the way to verse 17. Kindly do that assignment. I want you to pray and meditate and declare and mention and say these things before the Lord. Because you see, sexual immorality is something that we did in our darkness. Or probably you've never done it. You are a young person. It's something that is playing around your mind. But I want to assure you that when you come to Christ, whatever you are called to do, may you work at it with all your heart as for the Lord, not for men, knowing that we serve Yeshua Hamashiach, Lion of Judah. That is the one we serve. We serve Yeshua Hamashiach, Lion of Judah, Agunechemba. Say Yeshua. Hamasia, Lion of Judah. Welcome, Conceptor. Colossians chapter 3 is your homework. 1 to 17. And 22 to 23. 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Hey! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Psalm 113. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 113. In the name of Jesus. We have to move Swiftly, it's midnight at Missouri. We celebrate God for a new day. Welcome. Uh, you are the last one of the day for us. It's 13th of May and it is 8.32 in the a.m. The Holy Spirit is guiding us and we are full of joy and happiness. It says in Psalm 113, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? The one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the hardship. He sits them with princes and with princes of his people. He settles the childless woman in her home as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. What a joy to be able to come to Psalm 113 as we are learning about prophetic intercession. Your connection of your spirit, soul and body is very important for you to understand how to pray prophetically. Revelation 19 verse 10 says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So you have the testimony of Jesus. You have the spirit of prophecy. We have also 
the gifts of the spirit, which we are praying about, the nine gifts of the spirit, in the book of, um, is it first or second Corinthians? Somebody can tell me. I usually have that problem of knowing is it first, is it second, is it first, is it second, but by the time we are done with this journey, all that will be sorted out. Because practice makes perfect, as they said. First Corinthians 19 from verse number 7. It says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one is given the Spirit of the message of wisdom. To another the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. Prophecy is a gift of the Spirit. It says, to another distinguishing between uh, spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one as He determines. So the Holy Spirit is determining. Let Malcolm David Silla prophesy. Hallelujah! I begin to prophesy. And this is the thing. You must know the agenda of God about a matter. We speak of Israel as a nation. Why? We have the mandate. It says in the book of Psalms 2 verse 8, Ask of me the nations, and I will give them to you as your inheritance and your possession. That this is the thing, that the inheritance and possession that we are asking for is not silver and gold, but we are asking for nations. God, save Israel, save Palestine, move over the Hamas, move in Turkey, Jehovah, begin to confuse the minds of them in Jordan that are plotting against your church, that are plotting about, about your nation. Tel Aviv is not a very spiritual town, it's actually more like a European kind of a place. There is a beach, you know, there's a lot of debauchery and things going on in Tel Aviv. There are people in Tel Aviv who openly denounce God and say, where was this Jehovah when we were being slaughtered by Hitler? They have a hardening of heart. The Jewish people themselves have a hardening of heart. There are others who do not believe that Jesus has come in the flesh. They don't believe it. They are still waiting for the Messiah. Beloved of the Lord, what a joy to be able to pray in the time we are. When God has clearly highlighted for us the need for us to pray for the nation of Israel. It's not something that we are doing out of emotion. It's not something we are doing um, out of uh, the news. You have watched the news, then you start praying. No! By the agenda of God, I want you to notice this, that he even stopped this journey for about, is it 18 days? I don't know. Stop it. He said, wait, there's going to be a season break now. Wait. And when we started again, when you notice how the scriptures are flowing, they are flowing with even events going on in the nations. Ephesians, uh, not Ephesians, Ezekiel 37, talks about how the dry bones will come back together. And many times people love that scripture and they preach that scripture based on maybe the revelation that God has given to them. And they talk about if you are, your business has dry bones, it's going to be resurrected. That is good. But the prophetic meaning of Ezekiel 37 was the gathering of the nation of Israel from the nations. The nations had scattered them. He had scattered the nation of Israel. All of them had been scattered from their land. But God said, I will gather you like a hen gathers his chicks. And he said that I will give you flesh again and you shall live. And true to the fact, May 14th, 1948, Benjamin Ben-Gurion, the first prime minister of Israel, was there. I will play for you the clips tomorrow of him just pronouncing uh, the, 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 the nation of Israel. That you may show, may show you that God is faithful, that he said it, he will do it. Hallelujah. What a joy that the name of the Lord to be praised both now and forevermore. Psalm 113 is one of those prophetic prayers that you can make even as you make intercession. In the interest of time and what we have to read, we'll have to go to the book of Proverbs in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 19. It says, Better the poor whose walk is blameless than a fool 
whose lips are perverse. Desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? Whatever you desire, find out about it. If you desire to be a pilot, find out what it takes to be a pilot. Find out what you need to do. What study you need to do. How much money you need to pay. All these things. Desire without knowledge is not good. So you must know what you desire. You must be able to have understanding of what is this thing that I desire. Verse 3. It says, A person's own folly leads to their ruin, yet their heart rages against the Lord. 4. Wealth attracts many friends, but even the closest friend of the poor person deserts them. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 19 verse 5. A false witness will not go unpunished, and whoever pours out lies will not go free. Welcome, those of you who are joining us. We are now on Proverbs 19, and we are reading verse 6. Many carry favor with a ruler, and everyone is the friend of one who gives gifts. 7, 19, Proverbs 19, 7. The poor are shunned by their relatives. How much more do their friends avoid them? Through the, though the poor pursue them with pleading, they are nowhere to be found. The one who gets wisdom loves life. Wait, let me say something about seven. You say the poor are shunned by their relatives. How much more do their friends avoid them? Through the, though the poor pursue them with pleading, they are nowhere to be found. This is something that you need to determine as a person that you will not be comfortable with average. You will not be comfortable with being at the bottom of the pyramid. No. Uh-uh. That's not humility. We must desire to rise and God who says that he lifts the poor from the hardship. He causes them to live to and sit with the princes and kings. That's your portion. And let me tell you something, beloved of God. It's about the size of your God that determines your faith. It's about the truth you know that sets you free. If at all you do not know of a God that desires that you may prosper, even as your spirit prospers, then you will never pray for prosperity. In fact, the destruction that Satan has brought, he has allowed some other ministers to come who make wealth with a Christian look bad. When you start flaunting and doing all these things, it does not glorify God. If God gives you, uh, gives you wealth and gives you all these things and gives you the power to enjoy, then thank God for the gift and be a blessing to the people. Let the people say, truly, this is a man of God. Because they can see out of the reaction. But if at all now you start becoming a celebrity like everybody else, you start flaunting, you start pride, haughtiness, you start calling what you post content. This word, this one, is truth. And I'm thankful to God that this is what I am calling content in my life. I desire to know more. Even if it is not, I know many, many years, many years after we are all gone, technology will still be around. And people will come across these videos. And when they come across these videos, they say, wow, this is amazing. Because the word of God will be very rare. Very rare. You will not get the word of God easily. You try to get it, it will be full of advertisements and commercials about other things. When you try to get it, try opening your digital Bible and see the, the number of advertisements that they put in those Bibles, especially the free versions. For them to survive in that application, they need to, uh, they need to allow adverts on, on them. Some of the adverts that will come on your Bible applications are not Christian. Because when they signed the covenant with Google, they did not include that the advertisements will be Christian. No. So some of the advertisements that will come onto your mobile device when you are reading your, your Bible application on your device that is free, is some of those applications may actually lead you astray. Totally. I have seen uh, on YouTube sometimes, you are playing something gospel, then in the middle, an application, uh, an advertisement comes of a secular song that bears the same beats of what you have. 
Because technology is using algorithms. It's not checking who is the singer or what, no. It's just checking, okay, so we, are, we want to uh, promote this song on 500 uh, pages right now of people who like this kind of music. So you, you are letting your YouTube to go on, then all of a sudden, boom, some advertisement comes in. Without you being sensitive in the spirit, you let it go on. And within no time, you are back to worldly music. Listening to worldly music. Remaining in the flesh and not in the spirit. So you need to be very sensitive about this thing. And we do not remain comfy. We don't remain uh, ordinary. We must take time to pray for health and prosperity. That God who saved, he's the one who saved. And one thing about the promises of God, we just need to agree and follow the principles that take us there. In the mighty name of Jesus. So it says that he lifts the poor from the ash heap. It says he lifts the poor. It says he, he lifts, he raises the poor from the dust. Psalm 113 verse 7. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. Receive in the name of Jesus. You are not walking in poverty. You are not going to be poor in the name of Jesus. Yeah, poor, poverty is not our portion. It's not humility to be poor. Uh -uh, that one I refuse. My God desires that I may prosper even as my soul prospers. Again, the Lord did, delights in the prosperity of his servant. So I pray the Lord to bless the work of your hands. I pray that the Lord empower you. Whatever it is you find to do, do it as unto the Lord. That the Lord will lift you up. Diligent hands will rule. But laziness will end in slave labor. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare the favor of God, the majesty of God, the fullness of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, as we step out on this a wonderful time and season. We decree and declare favor, open doors in the name of Jesus. That prophetically we decree that there is no poverty. None of us is walking in poverty. That we are walking in the spirit. And also receiving the plunder of silver and gold. And good things. According to Psalm 112 that says, Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. It says good things. It says that wealth and riches are in their houses and their righteousness endures forever. The Lord who fills us with good things. Hallelujah. It says he provides food for those who fear him. Verse 8 of Proverbs 19. The one who gets wisdom loves life. The one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. So there is a principle. If you cherish understanding, you will soon prosper. You must cherish understanding. You must allow understanding to come. We must be able to cherish it. We must be able to get wisdom. Wisdom is gotten by the fear of the Lord. Psalm 111 verse number 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. Now listen, all who follow... Now, I want, let me go slow here because I think I might be going too fast for you. Let me go slowly because I want you... Let me watch and kuja karibu kidogo. Because this is a very crucial truth that when you catch it, you'll be able to pray prophetically and in a way of freedom. Your spirit will be free to pray. Because you love understanding. Now listen what it says. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh -huh. It says, all who follow his precepts have good understanding. Uh -huh. To him who belongs, to him belongs eternal praise. Now let's come over here. The one who gets wisdom loves life. Uh -huh. That is Proverbs 19.8. So I want us to connect this one with this other one. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The one who gets wisdom loves life. So now let's make a sentence. We say, the one who fears the Lord loves life. And then he says, the one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. The beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. The, the moment you follow the precepts of God, instant, you get understanding. You don't even pray for understanding anymore. If you follow the precepts of God, you will get understanding on the spot. Are we together? Joshua <laughs> unasema
<laughs> I want to get some rendile in me in Jesus' name. Listen. The one who gets wisdom loves life. The one who cherishes understanding will soon prosper. I want you to pray for yourself and say, I cherish understanding. I am prospering in Jesus' name. I'm prospering in Jesus' name. I'm prosperous already. I cherish understanding. I'm prosperous. I'm prosperous. Hallelujah. I fear the Lord. Wisdom is my portion. I'm prosperous. I'm prosperous. I'm prosperous. In the name of Jesus, I'm prosperous. Come on, pray. Tell the Lord these things. I get wisdom. For I fear you, Lord. I cherish understanding. I prosper. Verse 9, it says, A false witness will not go unpunished, and whoever pours out lies will perish. 10. It is not fitting for a fool to live in luxury. How much worse for a slave to rule over princes? I love these principles. Verse 11. A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Hmm. Verse 12. A king's rage is like the roar of a lion, but his favor is like the dew on the grass. Hey, my lord. Ay, 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 ay. You know, I just desire and pray for a whole day just marveling at the beauty of God and praying the scriptures and being deep in him. I think one of the mission Mondays I'm going to do that. I just retreat and just do that the whole day. It's like dew on the grass. Knowing this God, allowing your spirit to come to the place of connection with the Holy Spirit and allowing your emotions to follow. The messianic movement around the world, we have Jews all over the nations, even now. And um, we are just praying for them at this time. Not emotionally praying for Israel, but praying with understanding. Because the war between them is not something that has just happened. But you do not, you know, like, I was just listening to the news and they were talking about how the president of Palestine has been ruling for 15 years and the ruling term is 4 years. So the Palestinians want change. So he sees the easy way for us to not focus on our politics is to focus on Jerusalem. And that's how this whole issue started. We have Arabs living inside Israel. We have Jews living inside Israel. These two communities, the Arabs and the Jews, are the ones that we find in the book of Genesis. When Ishmael was born and Isaac was also born. So one is a son of the free woman, the other one is son of the bond woman. So that's where the problem comes from. And if you look at it, the son of the bond woman was not released without anything. He was given a blessing by Abraham. When the angel appeared, he did not appear because of the woman, he appeared because of the son. God says to Abraham that I will bless those that bless you. It means also the same thing. And that's why when we are praying, we are not praying like we are doing football. That we are Israelite against Palestinians. No. There is no place in the Bible says pray for Kenya. But there is a place that says pray for Jerusalem. Specifically a name of a place in the world. Kenya falls in the nations. Pray for you are the place, the city where you are. For where and when it prospers, you shall also prosper. Let me take you there in the book of uh, Jeremiah because your intercessors and you need to know that these things which you are reading here, you need to know them in your Bible.
It's in Jeremiah 29, verse 7. It says, Seek the peace. Seek the peace of the city. Let me read for you the NIV. It says, Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Jeremiah 29, verse 7. Are you praying for Missouri? Are you praying for, for, for Massabit? Are you praying for Paris? Are you praying for Brussels, my sister? Are you praying for Geneva? Are you praying for Kenya? Are you praying for Somalia? My brother Benjamin. Are you praying for Australia, my brother Benjamin? The peace of the place where you are. Very important. A king's rage is like the roar of a lion, but the favor is like the dew on the grass. Verse 13. I've only, let me mention something. I pray for us intercessors that God will give us financial freedom. Because one, once we have financial freedom, you have time on your hands. Financial slavery removes time from your hands. That's why you don't have time to pray. You don't have time to read the word. You have this meeting. Oh, I have Zoom meeting. I have this meeting. I have this meeting. You, unless you become jealous over your time, and unless you come to a place where you will say, I will wake up at one in the night. I will wake up at one. I will reach home and sleep on the spot because I want to tie, have time with God. I want time. Yani, there must be a strategy you will come up with. Because financial slavery is what is causing a lot of believers not to find time to pray, not to find time. They're just running from job to job, meeting after meeting. On your computer now you have seven Zoom meetings. This one is ending at 11.21, this one starts at 11.22, this one ends at 12.30, this one starts at 12.35. You don't have time at all. The time is swallowed. It is better when the people had to walk to your office. Now with this zooming, they zoom into your life, they zoom there, you will stay in front of your computer the whole day. You don't do anything else. You just do the work of the finances. I pray that God is going to set us free in this journey. Let him give us financial freedom. That yani, ata uneza kasi kumbili, awendi kazini, una mutafta mungu. Nasiati you are a pastor or a reverend, no. Just you yourself. You stay at home with your spouse, just worshiping the Lord, just focusing on Him, just reading the scriptures, just receiving prayer requests. And then you continue with the rest of the things you are supposed to do. May the Lord give us that freedom. May the Lord empower, may the Lord empower you as you are listening to me. May the Lord empower you. To be a tycoon of the Lord. That to serve the Lord with your wealth, your material wealth. I know that it takes only one check. One check. Kahuro Police Chapel is finished. My desire, my desire is that the Lord moves the hearts of the people to give towards that work. And even myself, may the Lord bless the work of my hands. Hallelujah. I also covet your prayers. Today I'm going back. Uh, to my work, I'm going to do some work and I covet your prayers. Covet your prayers. I covet your prayers. Pray for me as I go. I already have a booking. I mentioned it. I said, when I go back to work, I'll be fully booked. I'm a professional photographer. That's what I do. That's my tent making business. That's how I feed my family. The ministry requires also support. Because you know it's not a business. It's not something that you do as a business. You allow the Lord to be the Lord. And I know He's going to give us financial freedom. He's going to give us. When it comes, it will be evident. Hallelujah. It says 13. A foolish child is a father's ruin. And a quarrelsome wife is like constant dripping of a leaky roof. Verse 14, houses and wealth are inherited from parents, 
but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Now listen 15. Laziness brings on deep sleep and the shiftless go hungry. 16. Whoever keeps commandments keeps life, keeps their life, but whoever shows contempt for their ways will die. 17. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord. He will reward them for what they have done. Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Don't be a willing party to their death. 19. A whole tempered person must pay the penalty. Rescue them and you'll have to do it again. Listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you will be counted among the wise. Many are the plans of a person's heart, but the Lord's purpose is the Lord's purpose that prevails. What a person desires is unfailing love. Better to be poor than a liar. Hallelujah. The month of April, the month of unfailing love. I experienced the unfailing love of the Lord. The fear of the Lord leads to life. Here you see the confirmation. The one who loves wisdom, loves life. Then the other one says, the fear of the Lord Is the beginning of wisdom. So the fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rests content and touched by trouble. Hey, Jesus Christ. So the main thing is to fear the Lord. Verse 24. A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He will not even bring it to his mouth. Not bring it back to his mouth. 25. Flog a mocker. And the simple will learn prudence. Rebuke the discerning and they will gain knowledge. Whoever robs their father and drives out their mother is a child who brings shame and disgrace. Stop listening to instruction. Proverbs 19, 27. My son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. 28. A corrupt witness mocks at justice and the mouth of the wicked gulps down evil. Penalties are prepared for mockers and beatings. For the backs of fools. Mm. Proverbs 19. For the, I don't know what time. <laughs> We've been reading the book of Proverbs on replay. The book of Ecclesiastes. And I'm going to set an exam very soon for you. I will ask you to remember at least 10 Proverbs and write them down. That is the exam. I'm already giving you a leakage. Find out how have you been retaining the word of God. So, how many proverbs can you remember? How many proverbs? Write down in your proverbs can you remember? Often. Even if you don't know where they are, just write down. What does, what does it say? Trust in the Lord. And lean not in his own understanding, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What, what, what? Just write down as many proverbs as you will remember. Then now you come back marking for yourself. Find out how many you got right and how many you need to work on them. Because when we do this, we become sharp in the spirit. Sharp, sharp, razor. <laughs> Hi, Ecclesiastes, Mungu wangu. Nakupenda, asante, wewe ni Mungu. Wewe ni Mungu. Wewe ni Mungu, nakuheshimu. Asante, asante Mungu wangu. Nakupenda. Ecclesiastes 6. He says, I have seen another evil under the sun, and it weighs heavily on mankind. God gives some people wealth, possessions, and honor. And so that they lack nothing their hearts desire. But God does not grant them the ability to enjoy them and strangers enjoy them instead. This is meaningless, a grievous evil. I tell you this thing. Fine person is blessed. He has a beach house. He has a house up in the mountains, a cabin, what? He has the best cars, 90, 90 million dollars worth of cars. He has a helicopter, he has what? But the people who enjoy them are the workers, are the people, the drivers, are the ones who enjoy those cars, the pilots are the ones who enjoy his plane, because he does not, he's not been given the ability to enjoy. 
is not being given the ability. Hakuna hizo vitu zote lakini haizi kula nyama. Anakaa tu hapo. A man may have a hundred children, verse three, and live many years. Let no matter how long he lives, if he cannot enjoy the, his prosperity and does not receive proper burial, it is that is I say that a stillborn child is better off than he. It comes without meaning; it departs in darkness, and in darkness its name is shrouded. Though it never saw the sun or knew anything, it has more rest than does that man. Even if he lives a thousand years twice over, but fails to enjoy his prosperity, don't all go to the same place? Seven. Everyone's toil is for their own mouth, is for their mouth. Yet their appetite is never satisfied. Lord, help me. What advantage have the wise over fools? What do the poor gain by knowing how to conduct themselves before others? Better what the eye sees than the roving of the appetite. This too is meaningless. A chasing after the wind. Kujilisha upepo. Hallelujah. Whatever exists has already been named. And what humanity is has been known. No one can contend with someone who is stronger. So don't try. Just leave the stronger person. <laughs> the more the words, the less the meaning. And how, and how does that profit anyone? 12. Who knows what is good for a person in life? During the few and meaningless days that they pass through like a shadow, who can tell them what will happen under the sun after they are gone? There is no one who can tell you. But I pray that when we are gone, you will go to the narrow road. You will be heading to heaven. Ezekiel 38 came to me, son of man, set your face against Gog and of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. Prophesy against him and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against you, Gog, prince of Meshech and Tubal. I will turn you around, put hooks in your jaws and bring you out with your whole army. Your horses, your horsemen, fully armed and with a great horde of large and small shields, all of them brandishing their swords, Pashiach, Kush, and Put will be with them. All their shields and their helmets. Also, Goma with all its troops, and Beth, and Beth, uh, and Beth, um, Beth Togmar. Beth Togma, is it? Beth Togma from the far north with all its troops, the many nations with you. Get ready, verse 7. Be prepared, you and all hosts gathered about you, and take command of them. After many days, you will be called to arms. In future years, you will invade a land that has recovered from war, whose people were gathered from many nations to the mountains of Israel, which had been long, which had long been desolate. They had been brought out from the nations and now 
all of them live in safety. I'm reading Ezekiel 37, 38 verse 9. You and all your troops and many nations with you will go up advancing like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the earth. Covering the land. Verse 10. This is what the sovereign Lord says. On that day, thoughts will come into your mind and you will devise an evil scheme. You will say, I will invade a land of unwalled villages. I will attack a peaceful and unsuspecting people, all of them living without walls and without gates and bars. I will plunder and loot and turn my hand against the resettled ruins and the people gathered from the nations. This is exactly what is happening in Israel. Exactly what is happening. Listen to this. Rich in livestock and goods, living at the center of the land, Sheba and Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, and all their villages will say to you, Have you come to plunder? Have you gathered your hordes to loot, to carry off silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, and to seize much plunder? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to God, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. In that day, when my people Israel are living in safety, will you not take notice of it? You will come from your place in far north, you and many nations with you, all of them riding on horses, a great horde, a mighty army. You will advance against my people Israel like a cloud covers the land. In days to come, Gog, I will bring you against my land so that the nations know me and I am proved holy so, through you before their eyes. This is what the sovereign Lord says. You are the one I spoke of in my former days, in former days, by my servants, the prophets of Israel. At that time, they prophesied for years, I would bring you against them. Ezekiel chapter 37, 38 verse 18. This is what will happen in that day. When God attacks the land of Israel, my hot anger will be aroused declares the Sovereign Lord. Verse 19. In my zeal and fiery wrath, I declare that that time there will be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish in the sea, <coughs> the birds in the sky, the beasts of the field, every creature that moves along the ground and all the people of the face of the earth will tremble at my presence. The mountains will be overturned, the cliffs will, be tr will crumble and every wall will fall to the ground. I will summon a sword against Gog of all the mountains, declares the sovereign Lord. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will execute judgment on him with plague and bloodshed. I will pour down torrents of rain, hailstones and burning sulfur on him and on his troops and on many nations with him. And so I will show my greatness and my holiness and I will make myself known in the sight of many nations. And they will know that I am the Lord. Father, we pray at this time concerning the nation of Israel and what is happening, Father. We also pray for what shall come and what shall come to pass. King of glory, we ask that you may make yourself known in the sight of many nations. Let there be testimonies, let there be answers to prayer of you fighting for the nation of Israel. Lord, we have seen you give them wisdom to make come up with technology. The Lord anticipated such kind of attack from the enemies. We pray that God you watch over them. You keep watching over them. And Lord God, especially at this time, the Lord you bring a truce between them and Hamas and Palestine and everything that you have desired. Father, we pray that Lord Jesus you will have mercy on Israel. Father, we know we are even having a pandemic in the nations. And Lord, if these terrorists are sending rockets, they would desire even to use chemical means. But Lord, I pray that you frustrate the activities, frustrate the activities of the enemy, frustrate the activities of the enemy over the nations, not only in Israel and Palestine, but Lord, even in the nations of the earth, in Kenya, in Uganda, in Tanzania, in Brussels, in Belgium, we pray in you, in Germany, Father, stretch your hand and let your hand be upon us, Lord God. So we pray because we know you hear and answer prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we continue to pray. Amen. We head out to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And this is also talking about the times we are in. The man of lawlessness. Listen. 
concerning the coming of the Lord, our Lord, coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our being gathered to Him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by uh, uh, by alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by a prophecy or by a word of mouth or by a letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself for everything that is called God or worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Verse 5, Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what is holding him back, so that he may be revealed in the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. You can already see lawlessness. What you are experiencing in Jerusalem the other day, the riots in Jerusalem, in the city of Lord, and now the attack in Ashkelon, in, in Israel. These are the things that we are seeing as stages being set for the coming of the Messiah. And says, do not remember, don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things. And now you know what is holding him back so that he may be revealed at the proper time. Verse 7, For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds it back will continue to do so until, until he is taken out of the way. Verse 8 of Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Hallelujah, Sister Judy, we are together. And then the lawless one will be revealed when the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy the splendor of his coming. The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the life. And all the ways of that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Verse 11. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. And so that all will be condemned. Who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. Verse 13. But we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by God. Because God chose you as first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work. Hey, I love this truth. It says, through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through the belief. In truth, in the truth, he called you so that through our gospel that you might share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. Stand firm in the word of God. Stand firm, my brother. Stand firm, my sister. Verse 16. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope. Encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. Hallelujah. What a beautiful prayer. It says, may the Lord, our Lord, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us. Oh, thank you Lord for the anointing. Who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope. Encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go as we conclude to the book of um, Revelation. Revelation. I want to give you some time to pray for yourself. Off here so we might have to end the broadcast slightly earlier than the time that we do. Revelation 13 The dragon stood on the shore of the sea And I saw a beast coming out of the sea It had ten horns and seven heads With ten crowns and its horns And on each head a blasphemous name The beast I saw resembled a leopard But had feet like those of a bear And a mouth like that of a lion The dragon gave the beast its power and his throne and great authority. Verse 3. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. 
the whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. People worshipped the dragon because he had given he had given authority to the beast, and they also worshipped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can wage war against it? The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. Verse 6. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. Verse 7 of Revelation 13. It was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. It was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. Verse 8. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. All whose names have been written in the Lamb's book of life. The Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. Verse 9. Whoever has ears, let him hear. I want you to capture verse number 8. Towards the end it says, All whose names have been written in the Lamb's book of life. The Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. That even before Adam sinned, even before the sin was there, the lamb was slain. Prophetic intercession. That God saw that man has the capacity to sin against me. And because man has the capacity to sin against me, then I will slay the lamb. And his blood will make intercession for my people. And I will save them from going to hell. So there are people who ask a question and ask, how can a good God send people to hell? God does not send anybody to hell. Hell was there already. We were already on the way to hell, but he made a way out through our Lord Jesus Christ. You notice that the lamb who was slain from the creation of the world, that before the sin happened, God had a way, a plan of how to get man out of the sin. Verse 9. Whoever has ears, let him hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, now this is verse 10. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed with a sword, with a sword they will be killed. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. Verse 11. Then I saw a second beast. Coming out of the earth, it had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven in full view of the people. Because of the signs, it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. That's why you should not uh, follow miracles. You can see miracles, but not all miracles are from God. Not all of them. Because you see this one says, because of the signs it was given, power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth. So miracles is not a way to eternal life. I want you to notice this and get the right teaching and understanding that miracles are not the way of eternal life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You can be in a place where miracles are performed, but the miracles are not coming from the Lord. Very, very true miracles, but they are not from the Lord. Because you notice that the beast will have power even to call down fire from heaven. People will say this is Elijah. Because Elijah is the only person that called fire. You see we are living in times when we have to be very very close to God. You must be very very close to God. Very close. Walking close to God. Very close. Because if you are not carrying discernment, you will be deceived. Because the inhabitants of the earth are deceived by the power to on behalf of the first priest. It ordered them to set up an image. You see now, it ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. Verse 15. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak. 
and cause all who refuse to worship the image to be killed. Verse 16. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands and on their, for, on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast, or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. Beloved of the Lord, by His grace and capacity we have come reading six chapters of the Bible. We are sure that we will cap, we'll go through the entire Bible. By, we, by the time we get to season four, we will cover the entire Bible completely. Even the difficult books like Chronicles that you cannot be able to know how to read them, we will get there. Even the books like... Um, which book have you not read in the Bible? By this journey, we will complete this book. If you go through the videos and see how this Bible looked when I was starting, it was new, totally new. But now, it has made its way, you can see this is where the Psalms are. We've read it so many times now. These other parts also are going to follow this one. And we are all going to be reading the scriptures together. I thank God for the word of God. I thank God for... It needs no explanation. You don't need to defend it. When the word of God goes, it does not return in vain. I pray for you that does not know the Lord. I pray that God will open your heart, that you will know him. That the Holy Spirit will move in your heart. That you will understand that it is by his grace. Prophetic intercession will come only when you are walking in obedience and you pray more. Pray more. Get hungry more for God. Desire more. Engage. Engage. I will still challenge you to prepare to do an Esther's fast. <laughs> uh, three days. No water, no food. Dry. You will not die. I can assure you. I just did one uh, and I'm coming from a hospital. I did a pro I did an Esther's fast. Mine, I was just doing one Holy Communion because I have to do Holy Communion in this broadcast. And that's it, until the next day. And the next day, three days. What was I praying for? Lord, I want to know you more. Lord, release to me the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Lord, open my eyes. I want to know you. I mourn for you, Lord Jesus. Help me. Have mercy on me. Let your kingdom come over everything I'm doing, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Open my eyes to see. Hallelujah. Open my eyes to see. Oh my God. Open my eyes to see. Father, I thank you for your people, the nation of Israel, Lord. You have given us a command to pray, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but also to pray for salvation. The Lord, among the Jewish people, there be a desire, deepen a desire for us believers, for Jewish people know the Lord throughout the world. The Lord according to your word in Romans chapter 10 verse 1. The brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer for God, prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. Lord, let this be our desire. That our desire 
for the Israelites is that they may be saved. The Jewish nation. Lord, that as believers will not be ashamed of the gospel, but will share its power with everyone. Jewish people first and then Gentiles. So that we have the, they have the opportunity to believe according to Romans 1 verse 16. Father, even now I pray for a spirit of supplication. The Lord will be able to see the Lord Jesus as the firstborn and mourn for him like one mourns for an only son. Having full revelation of who he is. We have full revelation of Yeshua Mashiach, the Lord Jesus our Messiah. Ay, 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 ay. The Lord will come to you directly. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we join the angels and singing, hallelujah, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the one who was and is and is to come, the Amen, the firstborn from the dead, the lily of the valleys, the bright and morning star, the root of the tribe of Judah, of David, O oh God. Oh, Rabababa Oh, la 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 Help us to give thanks for everything you have done for us. We love you more, Lord. Father, we pray for the Jewish nation and the Palestinian believers. Oh, Marabo! Lord, rescue those women, rescue those children that are being used as shields. Father, let them escape. Ha! Ah. Lord, let those terrorists that have chosen to go the way of destruction, let them find judgments. For Lord, we know there are those who have chosen that direction. Father, we pray on our streets and in around the nations that the protests that are being done around the world People coming out to cast your nation. Father, we send a cover. <laughs> ah, we release the Spirit of God, the angel that came upon Balaam when he went to cast Israel. I pray that Spirit be released in the nations. Let the people that are going out in protest, my God, cursing the nation, burning the flag of Israel, doing all these kind of things. Lord, may you visit as many as possible. Come show yourself to them in the night. Lord, you have the capacity to do that. You have the capacity to come and show, to turn people from jihad to joy, to, to salvation. You have power. You have done it before. I... We ask you for your divine protection. We shall not be afraid. For your word says that that's, they will turn to the Lord and that the veil will be taken away. We pray for the veil covering the minds of your children in Israel. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. Let me start from verse 12. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would have had to put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. Listen to verse 14. But their minds were made down. For to this day, the same veil remains when the old covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. 
Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. The Jewish people are still in the old covenant. And when that covenant has been spoken, that old covenant is spoken, the veil that Moses had covered his face with still remains. But when they come to the Lord Jesus Christ, the veil is removed. So we want to pray that God will help them and help also believers that are in other nations, the Gentiles. Remember Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it's the power of salvation to everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. And just understand that this is profound. Is that we, as we pray for Israel, we are not reacting to what is happening because of the war. We know that this is the nation of God. But they have experienced a hardening in part. There's a veil covering their minds. We pray that God removes their veil. That many will turn to the Lord. Many will turn to the Lord. That the Jewish believers that are there, that God will cause them to mix even in a bomb shelter and they will be born again in a bomb shelter. They'll be walking down the street together. They run and there's a messianic Jew among them. The messianic Jew will prophesy, will pray for them. They will begin to get saved. A lot of them are getting saved. If you have a Jewish friend, call them, tell them about Jesus. Hallelujah. Romans 11, 25, 26 says that Israel has experienced a hardening in part and that may the fullness of the Gentiles come so that Israel may be saved. We pray that this is the portion that we are asking God for the nation of Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray that God will cause the peace of Jerusalem to dwell in our hearts and that the fire of God will flow in every category that the Holy Spirit will lead us and that we will walk in his purposes. Let us pray as we conclude. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for the nation of Israel, even on a day that is just before the Independence Day, Lord. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for your blessing. We pray for your favor. We pray, God, that your hand is going to be upon each one of us. Lord, as we release ourselves to go um, Lord, continue praying and to read your word. I pray for my sister Judy, Lord God. May you visit her there in Paris, Lord. May you cause a fresh anointing to come upon her. May you deepen her in your ways, oh God. May she walk in your purposes. May she make godly choices and everything. Lord God, we pray for your favor, even for the people that are here before Conceptor, Anna Mwangi, and all these people, Father. May your hand be upon Jeanette Navarez and the nation of Venezuela. Lord God, may your hand be upon them. Lord, we cover this day with your blessing. We cover this time with your favor. We decree, let salvation come upon the Jewish people and around the nations and around the Gentiles, Lord. May the messianic movement, O oh Lord, increase. May the Jewish believers be filled with the knowledge of God through all spiritual wisdom and understanding, bearing fruit and giving thanks. Let this be our portion as well. So Lord, we love you. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. And the church of Jesus Christ said, Amen. And the church of Jesus Christ said, Amen. And the church of Jesus Christ said, Amen. Hiya! Thank you so much. I love you so much, my uh, my dear mom Jeanette Navarez. I love you so much, Judy. God bless you so much for tuning in. Shalom, 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 shalom. Even for those of you who are joining us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. More videos are coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you all. I'll see you in the next video. Shalom. Uh, for Mom Zinets, I gave some homework and said uh, we have been reading the book of Revelation, Rome, uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Psalms. Uh, more, 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 more. I want you to just write as many as the ones you can remember. Write down how many Proverbs you can remember. Even if you not know the verse, and where it is write down the 
the proverb that rings in your spirit and find out how many you are. The, at least the pass mark is about 10 proverbs for now. 10 proverbs. You need to have at least 10 proverbs. You need to have at least 10 something from Ecclesiastes. You need to have 10 something from Revelation. You need to have 10 something from the book of Psalms. Try that and see what you have been retaining in your spirit as we learn and as we study together. God bless you. I love you all. Now, Penda, it's what you need. Amor, shalom. Continues. This is uh, what they had to check me on the hospital all the time. And it's reading at 96. The new lungs God gave me from 65. It's 96, 97, sometimes it's 99. And that confirms that when God heals you, He heals you for good. And it's a good thing we continue praying for the sick. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let me just make a prayer for the sick. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for these ones that are in hospital. There are others who have gotten reports about cancer. Others have received reports about sicknesses like COVID-19 and all these things. Father, as you delivered me, I pray deliver them in the name of Jesus. As you delivered me out of the sick bed, deliver them out of their sick bed. Even others who are on a deathbed, overturn that and cause them to get out and to live for Jesus. Give them messages and visions. Let them come back and talk to the people. Lord, I thank you because you're going to do these things. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Shalom. I love you.